Good morning. Good morning. God is great. All the time. All the time. God is great. Welcome to our church. We want to be food for the hungry and living water for the thirsty. This is a safe place for all ages to worship, to learn, to grow, and to become faithful disciples of Jesus. And children, we celebrate your smile, your energy, your wiggles, and your giggles. And we welcome all who are worshiping here today. Let's worship and let's praise God together. And we remember that our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And our vision is believing, belonging, and becoming. Those statements guide and lead everything we do and say in this place. And we welcome in worship leadership today, Janet Hibbs Jones. A special reminder that this is graduation and scholarship recognition Sunday, and we'll also be celebrating Holy Communion at the end of our service. So right now we have several announcements that we want to lift up. Yes, we do. And at about 11.30, 11.45 will be the first Sunday potluck. And that is fried chicken. The men's groups, the Grow Men, UMMN, uh, are hosts. And I've already seen it. There's lots of good stuff you want to plan on attending. Later today at uh, the Outreach Center for the Ignite service, which is at 6 p.m. So May 1st starts our 6 p.m. times. Uh, we are exploring God's people can, and today God's people can work together. And then you know, coming up Wednesday is the community meal. That's nachos. And so you're more than welcome to come and join us. But there's more to it than just that. So I'm going to hand some more of this over to Sarah. Wednesday is also Prayer Buddy Reveal for our Wednesday Jam Kids, and they are so excited. Uh, so if you are a Wednesday Jam Buddy, please be at the Outreach Center by 645 for worship, because that's when you will meet your buddy. And then after worship, you get to go have ice cream sundaes with them. And then this Friday is drop-off day for the garage sale. So our youth mission team is having a garage sale on Saturday, but we are taking items on Friday, not before Friday. I have nowhere to put your stuff. So if you have stuff that you would like to donate to the garage sale, you can bring it between 7.30 and 6 p.m. on Friday. At our outreach center. At our outreach center. Um, on the west side you just come up the ramp and if you would really like to help uh-huh put things out on tables just show up I'll put you to work the garage sale is then on Saturday starting at 7 and goes until 3 and all the money from the garage sale goes towards our youth mission team to Alaska all righty well let's join in our call to worship, inspired by Psalm 30. You who are faithful to the Lord, sing, sing praises, praises to, to God. God. You who are faithful to the Lord, give, give thanks, thanks to, to God's, God's holy, holy name. name. All right. And at this time, we are going to, before we do our song, we're going to invite our graduates to all come up. Isn't this a great group? Let's celebrate. Yes. Do you want them to do introductions? So we're going to have them introduce themselves. Uh, please tell your first and last name, where you go to high school, and what are your plans for the future. Hi, I'm Kyson Kreppel. I go to CHS. I'm going to go to a school in Wyoming called Laramie County Community College to take their welding program. Hi, I'm Hunter Colgrove. I go to CHS, and I'm going to go to Northeast Community College in Norfolk to become a diesel mechanic. Hi, I'm Haley Hoffman, and I go to Columbus Public High School, and I'm going to Wayne State College to study skilled and technical sciences education. Hi, I'm Rebecca Hoffman, and I'm going to, um, I'm from Columbus, the high school, and I'm going to UNK um, for music education. I'm Brock Coleman. I go to CHS, and I'm going to UNL to study PGA Golf Management. Uh, 
my name's Hayden Bell. I'm going. I go to Columbus High School. I'll be going to Coastal Carolina to study biology and pre-engineering. I'm Gracie Duncan. I go to Lakeview. I'll be going to Clarkson College in Omaha to study nursing. I'm Grace Hollis. I go to CHS, and I'll be going to Mount Marty University for nursing. I'm Abby Dane. Um, I go to CHS, and I'll be attending UNO to study biology. I'm Austin Boswell. I go to Columbus High School. I'm going to go to Central Community College to study computer science. I'm Makaya De La Cruz. I go to Lakeview, and I'm going to Doan to study elementary education. I'm Erica Keep. I go to Columbus High, and I'm going to be going to Florida International University to study marine biology. Would you please extend your hands forward and let's say a prayer of blessing for all of these graduates. Then we'll clap. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for the blessing of these high school graduates. God, you have instilled in them values that you want them to carry into their future. God, inspire them and help them to live a legacy that began in this community. God, bless them and keep them each and every moment and the next steps forward. Help them to feel your presence in powerful ways and help them to know that you are Lord and Savior. God, it is in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless these graduates in your holy name. Amen. Again, let's celebrate. Yes. Each year, the First United Methodist Church offers scholarships to high school graduating seniors who plan to attend college. These seniors must meet several requirements to be eligible for a scholarship. Those requirements are, you must have been confirmed or be a member of the Columbus First United Me Methodist Church. The second is to plan to attend a school of higher learning. And finally, you must apply for a scholarship. At this time, the scholarships for those who met all three of the requirements will be awarded. When the scholarship is announced, I would ask that the family or the committee who donated the scholarship to please stand in your pew as the senior receiving the award is recognized. Seniors, when your name is called to receive a scholarship, please step forward. You will be handed your certificate recognizing your scholarship and a flower to give to the family or the committee providing your award. When you return to the front, you will be handed a Bible from the Education Committee and a gift from the United Methodist Women. We're going to start with the Donna Wasco Memorial Nursing Scholarship. The Donna Wasco Memorial Nursing Scholarship was set up by Donna's family to help those going into the nursing field to attain their degree. The family wanted to open up this scholarship not just to the First United Methodist Church, but to all of the Columbus area high schools for those going into nursing. Donna loved nursing and even was the director of nursing at Maurice Haven. The fa family selected two recipients. The first recipient is Gracie Duncan from Lakeview. The second recipient is Grace Hollis from Columbus Public. The Pam Zering Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is given in loving memory of Pam by her mother Marilyn and the Zering family. The Zering family wanted to wish to remember Pam through this loving gift that is presented each year to a deserving senior. This year's recipient is Haley Hoffman. The Bruce Danley Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is giving, given in loving memory of Bruce by his family. Bruce loved the youth and was a strong supporter of the youth and the youth program. The family recognized that the recipient of this award must be active in youth, missions, or Sunday school. This year, the award goes to Makaya De La Cruz. The Mary Kuhn Memorial Scholarship. 
The family of Mary Kuhn instituted a scholarship in honor of Mary's love for the youth of this church. Mary loved music. And with that in mind, how incredibly fitting that this year's recipient is Rebecca Hoffman. The Sarah Claiborne Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship was instituted by Jeff and Jenny in loving memory of their daughter Sarah who died in an automobile accident when she was in high school. Their year's recipient is Austin Boswell. The United Methodist Women's Scholarship. The United Methodist Women began this scholarship many years ago as a way of saying we love you and we support you. This is not just a scholarship for women. It is open to any senior, male or female, who wishes to move forward in their journey of faith and trust in God. This year's recipient, Erica Keep. The Peg Jeffries Memorial Scholarship. This is the first year for this award. And this is a hard one for me, I'm sorry. Peg loved all children and youth. And it was the designation that part of her estate be left to the church to be used for a scholarship. This year's recipient is Kyson Kreppel. The Education Committee Scholarship. The Education Committee serves this church from birth to age 100 and over by providing learning and growing opportunities. The committee has provided a scholarship for years to continue the chance to learn and grow. This year's recipient, Brock Kuhlman. The Ann Callison Scholarship. Ann Callison served this church as Christian Education Director for many years. At her retirement, a scholarship for seniors was instituted. This year's recipient, Hunter Colgrove. And all of our graduates, whether they received a scholarship or not, all of them will receive a Bible and a uh, a gift from the United Methodist Women. Once again, let's congratulate our seniors. And today we are going to rise and sing our opening song, Open My Eyes That I May See. And we're going to use our hymnals today. It's the words are not going to be on the screen, so please open up your hymnals to 454.
you may be seated. And let's sing our song as we invite those who are young at heart to join our graduates up front. So good morning, good morning, how are you? You know what, it feels like it was just yesterday that these students were up here leading the children's time for confirmation, right? It was just yesterday, wasn't it? Yesterday plus a few years, right? So I want you, some of you that are willing to share, what is something that you've learned being a part of the body of Christ? being a part of the church. This side or this side? They're all going to be shy. You get to go first. What is something that you've learned being a part of the body of Christ? What has it meant to you to be a part of the body of Christ? Uh, That I always have people there for me when I struggle. Uh, Yeah, people are there for you even though you might not think they are. Uh, if I ever need something, I have people to go to. They've taught me to be more kind and humble. To be kind and helpful, yes. Yeah, you're just kind of what everybody else is saying. There's always somebody there for you. Always somebody there for you. We missed Erica. Um, Even when I'm struggling, there's people to guide me in my faith and help me along with my journey. Um, Yeah, even um, when I'm having a tough time, I know I can always look to the members of the church and Jesus for strength. Uh, I have to go off what Kyson said. There's always people there to help you out. Yeah, there's always someone there, and they help strengthen me. People are kind and respectful and um, are understanding what you're going through. Yeah. And so graduates, we don't want you to forget that the church is always here for you, right? The church is always here for you. The body of Christ is always here to listen and to guide you and lead you. And for those of you younger students, we want you to know how much God loves you, how much Jesus loves you and cares for you and wants you to help to grow in your faith so that one day, You're sitting here for confirmation. You're sitting here for graduation. And we're recognizing you for you growing in the faith. We celebrate these graduates and we celebrate everything they've already accomplished. And we celebrate the kind of legacy that they're going to leave for the future. How many of you believe that these young people are going to leave a legacy for us? You see those hands out there? Guess what? We're counting on you to make a difference in this world, but so is Jesus. So with that, would you join me in prayer? And then um, students, uh, graduates, I'm going to have you help me pass out candy. All right? Let's pray. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, thank you for our graduates, for their faith, for their hope, and for their love. We send them forth with our blessing to make a difference and to change this world for the better. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. So graduates, would you help the younger people to get some candy? They can take two, and then all of you can get some candy too, okay? So come on over. Get some handfuls of candy to help pass out. There you go. Everybody get some? And you guys all get some too. You don't want any candy? All right. 
Thank you. Let's sing our song of prayer. We celebrate to, that the altar flowers are from Bob and Rayetta Williams in honor of their 56th wedding anniversary, and that is today. Where are Bob and Rayetta? <laughs> They're in back, and yesterday I did a renewal of vows and a wedding, so I think you need to seal this with a kiss. Congratulations. And then, next slide. We are praying for Hastings First United Methodist Church, and that is being served by our former district superintendent, Reverend Lance Clay. And so we pray for Lance and Robin and the church family today. Other celebrations that we want to lift up to God. Any birthdays or anniversaries? Any additional ones? Yes. Kyson had a birthday on Friday. Kyson had a birthday on Friday. Others, other celebrations. Yes. Pardon me? Sebastian's birthday is on Wednesday. For the prayer buddy reveal, too. Woohoo! Other celebrations. Any others? What an amazing time of year to see our young people in action through all of their activities and events. And so we celebrate, we celebrate with all of you. Any others today? We want to continue to pray for uh, Don and Pat Fowler. Don is recovering from surgery, and Pat had an opportunity to see Pat at Tabitha, and just continued prayers. They request continued prayers today. We want to remember Andover, Kansas, uh, hit by a tornado this past weekend, and uh, Lord have mercy, a lot of devastation, but at this time, they are claiming that there have been no deaths, and so we want to we want to pray that to be so. Yes. Pardon me. Thank God for the nice rain. And Platt Center would say they got enough. Yeah. But Lord have mercy. Yes, Jackie. So lots of damage in Shickley, Nebraska, and in that county, and they were not able to worship today. The damage was extensive. They were not able to worship together today, so prayers for them. Others, any others today? Lord, have mercy. We're in the 50 days of prayer, and during this 50 days of prayer, we are reminded that we want to pray for the Holy Spirit to move in our church and through our church. Six years ago, we were getting ready. We were about a month uh, we were thir exactly 31 days from celebrating the birth of our outreach center. And so um, thanks be to God for those memories, and uh, let's continue to celebrate that. Any others? And I have to say, it's always a good day to celebrate fried chicken. Amen? Amen. Uh, during, um, during Holy Week, we had a prayer vigil and during that prayer vigil, we had people write down their prayers. And so um, during this month and in this new sermon series of Leaving a Legacy, 
I want to share some of these prayers. I do not know anybody who wrote them, but um, I'm going to share these prayers and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray together. God of love, I pray that people, individuals, and collectively come to see and practice love over hate, patience over demanding, humility over power, giving over receiving, and most of all, serving you and all your people over serving ourselves, just as you showed us. And in the name of Christ, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
are grateful for all that Jesus Christ has ever done for us. And in that spirit, we are going to receive our tithes, our offerings, and gifts this day. And while our ushers are receiving our gifts, we are going to be watching the graduation video.
Let us rise and praise God. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we are and all that we have, that we may praise you with our whole lives. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the Word of God. Today's scripture lesson is written in the first chapter of Acts beginning at the first verse. In my former book, in my former book Theophilus, I wrote about that all, all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all the Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky, and he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. May God add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of this word. Amen. Thank you, Tayden. Let's pray. Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word, open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst, and open our hearts that we might know your Spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Legacy. It is a noun. It means something passed down from one generation to the next. Now, oftentimes when we think about legacy, we actually think about an inheritance. We might think about family heirlooms. But what if we embrace the fact that a legacy of faith, hope, and love has been passed down to us, and we too are called to share that legacy with future generations? In this post-Easter season, we're going to be exploring passages from Acts of the Apostles and themes from Max Lucado's book, Outlive Your Life, realizing to emb- the opportunity that we can embrace our Christian legacy. So today we remember when Jesus ascended into heaven and embracing what was to come for the disciples and claiming what is to come for us too. And graduates, you might hear just something that's just for you today as well. So why is it so important that we share our legacy of faith, hope, and love? In 2010, in his book, Outlive Your Life, Lucado reminds the readers that heaven heaven knows that these are devastating times. Over 1.7 billion people in the world are desperately poor. In 2020, 37.2 million people faced poverty, and that is just in the United States. Over one billion people are hungry, like they don't know where their next meal is coming from kind of hungry. Over 5.5 million children are exploited in global sex trade. 
When Lucado wrote his book in 2010, that was 2 million. And again, now it's 5.5 million. More than half of all Americans or Africans do not have access to modern health facilities. So 10 million of them die each year from preventable diseases. And of that 10 million, 3 million are children under the age of 3. These statistics and their respective updates disturb me. How many of you are disturbed by these statistics? We all should be disturbed by these statistics. And yet, Max Lucado reminds readers in his book that here we stand, the modern day version of the Jerusalem church with our one of a kind lifetimes and once in history opportunity. He suggests that there is one word that can tra transform our doubts into hopes, a word that can even alter our perspective from fear to expectation, from tragedy to opportunity, and that word is kairos. Kairos is an ancient Greek word about a God-ordained divine moment. And what is even more God-ordained and divine about this is that kairos, the word kairos, came to me in the midst of conversations during Holy Week with staff about a discipleship process for our church. And it was long before this sermon series came to fruition. It's not a coincidence. It was a kairos, God-ordained divine moment. And so we know that the ascension of Jesus, which is depicted by our last stained glass, or we could say the last in Jesus' life and ministry, or we could say it's the first on this side, we know that the ascension of Jesus was certainly God-ordained and divine, wasn't it? Imagine Jesus was appearing to the disciples for 40 days, giving them encouragement and hope for the future. And yet, it wasn't enough for them, was it? They wanted to know when the time was that Jesus was going to restore the kingdom of Israel. And so Jesus had to remind them again that it wasn't for them to know the dates or the times that the heavenly father had set by his authority. And then Jesus reminds the disciples of their mission to wait for the power of the spirit and then to be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Our passage reminds us that when Jesus was taken up into heaven right before their very eyes, a cloud hid him from their sight. It had to be so beautiful. It had to be so peaceful. And of course, it was so Jesus. And still, those disciples that witnessed the ascension of Jesus then had to face the heaviness of that moment, didn't they? After Jesus was crucified and died and was buried, they truly imagined the worst. And then on the third day, he was alive. The past 40 days for these disciples had to be such a blessing, seeing Jesus, gaining a new perspective, and gleaning every single thing that he could teach them and instill in them. And so it's so interesting and even ironic when those disciples are staring up into heaven, <laughs> staring up into heaven, just standing there, and it was two angels, two men dressed in white, we assume they were angels, stand beside them and say, why do you stand here looking up in the sky? The angels were reminding them that they had lingered long enough. Now it was time to get on with their work. They had to replace Judas Iscariot. They had to get the churches organized. They had people to heal and to care for. They had theology to develop and they had persecution to avoid. Oh, and they had to wait for the Holy Spirit to come and to show them the way that they were going to be able to change the world. William Willimon says that when, that when we disciples gather after Easter, we do so and we wait and we question. The resurrection is the source of our hope, but it's also the source of our yearning. We too want Christ to fulfill his promise of restoration, to finish the work that has begun. But God is calling us to realize that we have been given this moment, this moment in time, this moment in history as Christians to remember that Jesus has blessed us and inspired us to change the world. Yet if we are honest, we admit that this particular opportunity and this particular responsibility is overwhelming. Amen? It's overwhelming. 
But life was like that for those apostles in the early Christian church. And the truth is that life is like that in our modern world too. Just a few days, I was heading to Lincoln to see my dad. My dad has been placed into a memory care facility. It was time. And as I was driving to Lincoln to see him in his new facility, I was feeling this overwhelming sense of just being overwhelmed. Now, when I travel, I like to visit. And so I'm talking with friends or I'm talking with God. And sometimes I'm just listening to the radio. And all of a sudden, there was this beautiful song that came on country radio by Gabby Barrett. And it's titled, Pick Me Up. Pick Me Up. I love this song. And I'm not going to lie that in those moments, I was tearful. I was anxious. And yet, right at that moment, there was this beautiful scene right in front of my windshield. As I was driving along, all of a sudden, I saw this big bird. I mean, like a big bird flying. And this bird was flying back and forth. And I was looking, I was trying to look and drive. And I was watching this bird. And all of a sudden, this bird crossed the highway and perched in a tree on the other side. And I realized that it was a bald eagle. I have to tell you that that was the closest I've ever been to a bald eagle. And it was majestic and it was beautiful. And in those moments, I said, Jesus, pick me up. Jesus, lift me up on wings like eagles. And then all of a sudden, peace. You know that kind of peace that just comes over you, that reminds you that everything's going to be okay, that kind of peace that, that lifts you up and restores your soul? It was that kind of peace. And I have to say that when I got to see my dad, my dad is happy. He's happy right now. He's content. And I'm so grateful. You know, God blessed my overwhelmed with a sense of purpose. You know, the ascension of Jesus lifts our eyes to heaven. And I love that picture. Remember from Confirmation Sunday? By the way, Kevin Whited is the one who arranged all the pictures, the cross and, and from the balcony. And I love that picture where you were all standing there. And I thought, how appropriate that we are doing the ascension of Christ today, imagining those disciples all looking up. And we have to remember that when we lift our eyes to heaven, even if for a, remote, for a moment, that we have to remember that, that Jesus has this, right? He has all of this chaos in the world, this stress and distress, the grief and the sorrow, as well as this overwhelming legacy of faith, hope, and love that is meant to be shared. Jesus has got this. But like those disciples, we can't stay and linger too long with our eyes lifted to heaven because Christ is counting on us to get busy here on earth, to claim our Kairos moment, our once-in-a-lifetime moment to make a difference in our corner of the planet. Graduates, this is just for you. I want you to claim your Kairos moment. Claim this time in your life to pursue your dreams and your hopes. And I want you to make this world a better place. I want you to do everything in your power to clean up our planet. I'm not putting it all on you, okay? But I want you to be leaders and help us do this. I want you to cure diseases. I want you to seek peace with justice. I want you to keep your faith right in front of you. And I want you to live out your hope and I want you to love out loud. And don't forget that your faith journey started here. And that this church is here whenever you need it. Graduates, make us proud. Make us proud. And leave your legacy. You know, Christ is counting on all of us to leave a legacy for future generations, to look back at this moment and to celebrate our faith, our hope, and our love, and to remember this season of the church and its impact on the future. So in the name of Christ, we remember always the best is yet to come. Graduates, did you hear that? The best is yet to come. Amen? Amen. I would invite all who are assisting with communion to please come forward.
Jesus Christ invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and desire to live in communion with God and with one another. It is in that spirit that we come to this Christ's holy table and we join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. And it's a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God in heaven and said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on those worshiping with us online and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Jesus, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We practice open table communion. All who call on the name of Jesus Christ are invited and welcome to receive the gifts of bread and cup. We will be serving communion at the front. We will invite you to come forward and we would invite you to place your hands open. We will place a piece of bread in your hands. You will eat the bread, then you will receive a cup. And after you drink from that cup, you may put the cup in our receptacles off to the side. As you receive these gifts, appropriate responses are our amen or thanks be to God. And we will have two stations in the front, and then we will also be providing assistance to those who are in the pews who need it. As you are preparing for the gift of Holy Communion, we'd invite you to sing our communion songs that are listed. And a few more things we want you to know. We do offer a gluten-free option to bread. Just let the servers know. And if you have a need to be served where you are seated, please let the ushers know. There are emergency fund uh, plates that will be located up front. These funds go to help church members and others who may be in need. So please be as generous as you are able. The Lord's table has been set before you. Receive and taste God's grace.
one verse of the last one. Okay. Have all been served? Not yet. Until all have tasted God's grace, we continue this important work and leave a legacy. Let us rise as we sing our closing song, and we're going to sing the first verse of Blessed Assurance. Let us rise and sing. receive our benediction and then the graduates are lined up in back so you can greet them there it has been said the idea is not to live forever but to create something that will may jesus christ the risen christ bless you and keep you and the people of god said amen, amen.